The camera is on. Right now, five. Did you have your ears first? Y'all? Okay. So, it's been, yeah, for all, it's been a long time since we were in class. Thank you. Uh, does anybody remember what book of the Bible we're in? Matthew. We're in Acts, not Matthew. That was what my brain said when I was trying to yeah. look up the verse. It feels like we're, we're barely into Acts, but we're already on chapter 12. So hopefully you guys will remember some stuff that's kind of going on. Uh, but it doesn't really matter if you don't exactly remember where we are, because you'll, you'll be able to figure it out. Um, Wasn't that when Jesus ate with the uncircumcised men? Um, not Jesus. It was, uh, I believe it was Paul? Peter. It was Peter. Him and Paul. They both did it, but I don't remember who wrote it down. So I'm thinking it was probably Peter. Yeah, it was Peter. By the way, are we going to meet Joel? Uh, we will not meet Joel. Darn it. Are we fifth grade? Yeah. Are you? Yeah, that's next year. I'm not fifth grade. You're in fifth grade? I don't, I don't remember who's in fifth grade. I'm in sixth. Peter's in sixth grade. <laughs> yep, I'm oh, in sixth. Oh, you got me. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, Brayden. Is there another sheet somewhere? Did I not print off of you? Here's one. Here's one. Somebody and spilled like, some water on that like, one. It my cup had a hole in it, actually. Um, oh, great, you, you can sit it here. Over. If you want to. Don't blame it on. Cora decides to move her ketchup and her yeah. chick fil A. You have to put the ketchup on the top of the Alright, well, we've got some stuff to go through tonight, and so hopefully we'll be able to play a little game or something. So. Uh, it's more so let's, let's just get jump on in. When I see two boys, I'm like, how about the candy pack? There's no candy because we haven't done Dr. Mission in like. Yeah, we have. There's candy right there. Okay, you're fine. Okay, alright. James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword.
came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left it. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were anticipating. <laughs> when this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outer entrance, and a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter's at the door. You're out of your mind, they told her. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said, it must be his angel. But Peter kept on knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the brothers about this, she said, and then he left for another place. In the morning, there was no small commotion among the soldiers as to what had become of Peter. After Herod had a thorough search made for him and did not find him, he cross-examined the guards and ordered that they be executed. Then Herod went from Judea to Chesarea and stayed there a while. He had been quarreling with the people of Tyre and Sidon. They now joined together and sought an audience with him. They secured the support of Blastus, a trusted personal servant of the king. They asked for peace because they depended on the king's country for their food supply. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robe, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, This is the voice of a god, not of a man. Immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. Yeah. To catch up. Flip now or Dixie. Oh, no. 
in the church at Antioch. Is there another question that you guys have answered? Yes, sir. Correct. When Barnabas one. and Blaine had finished their blank, they returned from blank. Or one. Blank, 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 blank. No, not one was intending to persecute them. Oh, okay. Weird. I watched it on YouTube where they make these things. I don't really know how this works. But this one is correct. and Saul had finished their mission, they returned from Jerusalem, taking with them John, also called Mark. And that's under chapter. They returned from Jerusalem? Yeah, they returned from Jerusalem. Okay. So, what is number one? Sit down. Right, intending to persecute them. And what does that mean to persecute someone? Like kill them. Could mean to kill them, right? Could be just more, less than that. Torture. Yeah, it could be torture. It could be just general mean kind of things, right? Uh, thro throwing them in jail, maybe. It doesn't have to be torture and kill. Uh, there's lots of ways to persecute people. Um, okay. Uh, number two, Izzy. The trick was earnestly praying to God. Right. Who are they praying for? The man who got eaten by the worms? No, that was Herod. He was the bad guy. Uh, Kailana. Peter. Peter, yeah. They're praying, They're praying for praying Peter, for and why were they praying for him? Oh, um, he's going to die. He's yeah, because he was in jail and he was maybe going to get executed. Um, so yes, yeah, so they were earnestly praying to God for him. Um, but he doesn't end up getting executed. Uh, number three. Um, how are you? Um, he thought he was seeing a vision. He thought he was seeing a vision. But what was he really seeing? The angel. The angel, right? And what was the angel doing? Freeing him. The angel was freeing him, right? The people were prayed for him, and so the angel came, and the angel freed him. Um, okay, number four. She ran back without opening it. Yeah, she ran back without opening it. Because she didn't believe that it was really Peter. Or she was, no, she was, she was just happy to see Peter. Okay, number six. Cooper. An angel of the Lord came, wait, uh, I don't know, struck him down. Yeah, he struck him down, right? That was what we just saw, the dramatic uh, dying, right? The angel of the Lord killed him. That's what it means. Uh, and then the worms ate his body. I don't know why that is in there. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but it's in there, so... It that must be something. The ground, the show, the but they couldn't bury his body, maybe? Maybe, Ew. something with burial. That could be true. Uh, Ian, you have thoughts? Um, maybe it's because like, it has something to do like representing the power of God. Yeah, like, probably. It's representing that like God no. created these new forms and these new forms got, got rid of the final evidence of this cruel man who's kind of like the devil. Not yeah, bad. it's probably that. Probably is a pretty good answer. Walter, you got something to add? It said because he didn't thank God. Right. Yeah. So that's why he punished him, right? That's why he struck him down. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So if you guys don't thank God, he's going to strike you down and eat, and then worms will eat you. No. Um, that's not true. Uh, but. Uh, we do know, right, that the wages of sin is, is what? Is death, right? 
So God might not, he's not going to kill you right away, but we are going to die because of the sin that we have, right? Uh, because before we fell into sin, did we die? No. No, exactly, right? Uh, because we ate of the, the tree. Oh, did you know the answer to that yeah. one? Well, you finish it off for me then, right? Well, because uh, Adam and Eve ate the tree of sin. Yeah, the, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's what it's called. And then sin entered the world because of that. Um, but before that, they were eating a different tree. Does anybody know what the other tree was called? Good tree. Okay, it was a good tree. tree Not what it was knowledge. called, though. No. The tree of life. The tree of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was called the tree of life because when they ate of it, they didn't die. Um, and so, when they eat the the knowledge of good and evil, and sin comes, God kicks them out of the garden so they can't eat the tree anymore. You know, the, so that's why we die. Okay, number seven. Oh, did you have a question? I'm sorry. I wasn't sure why you had your hand up, but you can, do you have a question? Okay, ask me your question. Well, it's more of like a theory to why worms ate him. Okay. Because you know how some people eat like crickets and stuff? Yes. It's like because they might have ate worms. Maybe. I don't think they ate worms there, though. I don't think many people eat worms. Uh, but maybe. I don't know. I don't know, the right, I don't know if that's totally wrong, but I'm going to go with probably not. Uh, yes. Can I say number seven? Uh, you may say number seven. When Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission, they returned from Jerusalem. Right. When Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission, they returned to, to Jerusalem. Oh, re return from Jerusalem. So this is kind of the only really part in this chapter where we talk about Saul or Paul, right? He hasn't yet become Paul. He's still, he's still Saul. Okay. Um, so the rest, of, the rest of these chapters are just kind of be, we'll be jumping around. All of a sudden, we're over here. And the disciples are doing something that will be somewhere else, and they're doing something kind of like a TV show, right? Where you kind of jump back and forth to all these different places. That's kind of like what's going to be happening uh, with this. So try not to get too confused because it, it is confusing in all the names they'll say. Yeah? It's like watching Phineas um, and Ferb, then watching an Avengers movie, yeah. then watching Power Rangers. Maybe. Jumping around. I, maybe. I've never seen Phineas and Ferb, so I can't see Ferb more than that. Okay, let's go on to chapter 13. Simeon, called Niger, Lucius to Cyrene, Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod the Tentron, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I called. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them on. The two of them, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to Cilicia and sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogue. John was with them as their helper. They traveled through the whole island until they came to Patmos. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet named Bar-Jesus, who was an attendant of the proconsul Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elimus, the sorcerer, and that is what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elimus and said, you are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? The hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind, and for a time you will be unable to see the light of the sun. Immediately, his son is and he groped ah! about seeking someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed. But he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. From 
Mathis, Paul and his companions sailed to Perth, Bangkok, where John left them to return to Jerusalem. But they entered the synagogue and sat down. After the reading from the law and the prophets, the synagogue rulers sent word to them, saying, Brothers, if you have a message of encouragement for the people, please speak. Standing up, Paul motioned with his hand and said, Men of Israel, and you Gentiles who worship God, listen to me. The God of the people of Israel chose our fathers. He made the people trust during their stay in Egypt. With mighty power, he led them out of that country. He endured their conduct for about 40 years in the desert. He overthrew seven nations in Canaan and gave their land to his people as their inheritance. All this took about 450 years. After this, God gave them judges until the time of Samuel the prophet. Then the people asked for a king. And he gave them Saul, son of Kish of the tribe of Benjamin, who ruled 40 years. After removing Saul, he made David their king. He testified concerning him. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. From this man's descendants, God has brought to Israel the Savior Jesus, as he promised. Before the coming of Jesus, John preached repentance and baptism to all the people of Israel. As John was completing his work, he said, Who do you think I am? I'm not that one, no. But he is coming after me, whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. Brothers, children of Abraham, and you God-fearing Gentiles, it is to us that this message of salvation has been sent. The people of Jerusalem and their rulers did not recognize Jesus. Yet in condemning him, they fulfill the words of the prophets that are read every Sabbath. Though they found no proper ground for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him executed. When they had carried out all that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And for many days, he was seen by those who had traveled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now his witnesses to our people. We tell you the good news. What God promised our fathers, he has fulfilled for us, their children, by raising up Jesus. As it is written in the second psalm, you are my son. Today I have become your father. The fact that God raised him from the dead, never to decay, is stated in these words. I will give you the holy and sure blessings promised to David. So it is stated elsewhere, you will not let your holy one see decay. For when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his fathers, and his body decayed. But the one whom God raised from the dead did not see the cave. Therefore, my brothers, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. <laughs> through him, everyone who believes is justified everything you could not be justified from by the law of Moses.
that what the prophets have said does not happen to you. Look, you scoffers wonder and perish. I am going to do something in your days that you would never believe. Even if someone told you. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue, the people invited them to speak further about these things on the next chapter. When the congregation was dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts to Jesus followed Paul and Barnabas who talked with them and urged them to continue in the grace of God. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and talked abusively against what Paul was saying. Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, We have to speak the word of God to you first. Since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. <clears throat> I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. <clears throat> but the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord, and all who were appointed for eternal life believed. The word of the Lord spread through the whole region. But the Jews incited the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconia. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. At Iconium, Paul and Bar okay. Fasted and prayed. Does anybody know what fasting is? Joel. It's like when you don't eat or something for a Yeah, when you don't eat or something. Right? It's, uh, there's lots of different ways to fast. Either you don't eat for the whole day, or you only eat. Wait, what is it? Fasted and prayed? Yeah, fasted and prayed. So either you don't eat for the whole day or a couple days, or you... What? There's a bunch of them eat for a whole month. Well, they don't eat during the day. That's the thing. So the other thing is that you don't eat while the sun's up. So people eat, will wake up early in the morning and eat, and then they'll eat when the sun goes down. Um, yeah, eat it. Um, during Lent, don't, isn't it a tradition to like not eat uh, meat on Fridays and only eat fish? So some people do that, yeah. Some people do that. Other people like to fast during Lent, so they don't eat during the day. They do what I said before, they only eat before the sun comes up and after it goes down. Uh, it's a, it is a little weird, but... Um, Cora. You'd probably rather fast in the winter because if you fast it in the summer, then you just... Like, be hungry pretty much all day because the sun's up. Oh, the sun yeah. Uh, well, no, I guess we do, I guess Lent is before the Lord save its time. But why would you want to fast? Any, any ideas why you would do that? Peter. Um, I don't know. Maybe to get You don't know? Okay, well, let's see if anybody else knows. Maybe, if it was in this century, maybe it's to lose weight or if your coach is making it. Okay, some people do do that. You're right. But let's try to think. Paul, or Paul. Joel. To Okay, kind of. It's part of it. Maybe I'm all in the right lines at least, Cora. So you're asking why we do it in Lent? Yeah, why would someone want to fast? Because. Lent is like the time, isn't that the time where like Jesus dies? So like it's fair to die? Holy week, right? Yeah, so people fast, they like, they give up some foods because since Jesus gave his life, then they give up their foods and faith. Uh, maybe, maybe that could be a reason. Um, but not the most, the biggest reason. Cooper, do you have any ideas? Uh, the store. 
not to starve. So some people, how much, how long does it take you to eat lunch? How long do you guys get for lunch? 25 minutes. 25 minutes, 30 minutes, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, you don't get an hour. They give me 30 minutes, but I'm done in like 5. 30 minutes, and then you go eat dinner with your families, and how long does that take? Oh, like, four hours. Four hours. So it's a lot of time though, right? You take time out of your day to eat breakfast, to eat. Uh, dinner to eat lunch and so people fast um, and then they spend that time that they would spend eating they spend that praying or reading the Bible or doing something like that right so it is kind of along the lines of what Cora said where they are they're giving up something uh, some part of their normal day and they're spending that time in God's word or they're praying or something like that and so that's what, that's what they're doing here, right? They're uh, not taking the time to eat, and instead they're using that time to do the other part, to, to pray. Okay, number nine. Sydney. He wanted to hear the word of God. He wanted to hear the word of God, right. Who said, who wanted to hear the word of God? The, uh, the one, per, the... One lord or something? Yeah. Yeah, he's called a pro council. Yeah. It's like a governor. Guy. He's pretty much their governor. Uh, and he's a Roman soldier, basically. Uh, yeah, he's like their governor uh, from Rome. And so he wanted to hear the word of God. And why is that special, I guess? That a Roman soldier, yeah. Because Romans believed in their own set of gods, like Neptune. Yeah, right. Pluto. Uh, yeah, they they didn't worship. They were they worship many gods, right? And especially they're not Jews, right? Because we're talking uh, that whole kind of sermon that Peter says in a little bit is all talking about uh, how great it is to be a Jew and how God chose the Jewish people, the Israelites. Uh, but um, the promises after Jesus comes, his promises are for everybody, even the Roman emperor uh, proconsul people. Okay, so let's keep moving here. Number 10. Um, the hand of the Lord is against you. The hand of the Lord is against you. And who was the hand of the Lord against? Fake God. Oh, the, like, yeah, the weird sorcerer guy, right? The guy, uh, yeah, he wasn't wearing a shirt, just that was, cape thing. Was he the dude who, like, fell down and got hurt or something? Yeah, he gets blinded, right? Peter looks at him, and he says this, The hand of the Lord is against you, and then he becomes blind. Uh, yeah, because why did he... Why was the hand of the Lord against him, and why did Peter yell at him? Teaching God in way? Uh, yeah, yeah, right? He was trying to lead people away from the real teachings, right? He was trying to lead the king guy away. Okay, uh, number 11. Please, please. Okay, number 11. After the beating from the law and the Lord. The law and the second one, Addison. Prophets. The prophets. Prophets. Yeah, the law and the prophets. Um, after the reading from the law and the prophets, and what are the law and the prophets? Do we still have them today? Yes. 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 What are they? The law is like focused on the things that you shouldn't do and like pointing to your sins. Okay, that's the, right, that is the broad sense law, right? That's the, the capital, no, maybe not capital, that's the lowercase l, law. That's the law. But the law and the prophets here are referring to something else, because they're reading from it. So it's a specific set of laws, Eden. Um, question about number 10. Okay, we'll come to that in a second. Uh, let's just do this. Capital. Uh, okay, Laura. God's word. God's word, specifically. The first five books. The first five books is the law, right? The Torah, the Old Testament, and then the rest of the Old Testament is the prophets. 
You guys ever heard of Isaiah? Yeah. Remember we talked about Isaiah so much in Matthew? Yeah. yeah. Uh, talking about all these prophecies and stuff. That, that's Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, books like Joel. Joel, yeah, Joel's a prophet. Anybody else in here a prophet? No, no more prophets. Uh, okay. So yeah, so they're they where are they reading from the law and the prophets? Where were they hanging out? In the house. Okay, not in a house. Temple? Uh very close to a temple. So they're they had the temple. It's like a little mini temple. No, but I know what you're trying to say. You're just not saying it's not Wisconsin. It's a the tabernacle. Not the tabernacle, the temple. What? What was it? The synagogue. Now you're on the road. Did you say that? Okay. It's the synagogue, right? They're hanging out in a synagogue, which looks a lot like a house because their buildings are all small. Uh, so yeah, their synagogue. It's basically they're going to church, right? If they're going to church on Saturday. They go to the synagogue. Yes, Ian. Your question on number ten. So, what the fake preacher dude? Was he like preaching about like law and? No, he was a Jewish sorcerer, it said. So he was just not, he was a Jewish sorcerer. So he uh, was Jewish. So he was against Jesus. So, you were saying that dude that you saw earlier? No, not Jesus. Well, he was, yeah, I mean, he was telling the, the governor that these people are lying to him. Uh, that they're, what they're saying is crazy talk. That's what he was saying. Okay. So, number 12. He made David. He made David their king. No. David was their king. Okay, number 13. No one has brought to Israel the Savior Jesus. God has brought to Israel the Savior Jesus. Condemning him, they fulfilled the words of the of the prophets. So who did they condemn? Jesus. Jesus, right? Uh, we talked about all those prophecies, right? The word of the prophets, that's the prophecies in the Old Testament, which are talking about what Jesus is going to do, what he's going to, what everything is going to happen. Okay, number fifteen. They are his witnesses to our people. So, not everybody saw Jesus, right? Because it's just one guy, he can't be, I mean, he's God, so he can't be everywhere, but he wasn't everywhere at once. So not everybody saw him, and so uh, he needed people who did see him to tell everyone else. Um, and so, who are the people that saw him the most? The disciples. The disciples, right? And what did the disciples do with all the things, or with a lot of the things that Jesus told them and taught them? Told it to other people. They told it to everyone else. What else did they do? Treasured it. Okay, they treasured it. What else did they do? Oh, you know it? Okay. They fulfilled the world, word with it. Okay, they filled the world with it. And how did they do that? Oh, the word. By teaching it to people. How did they use to teach it to people? What did they do with it? They wrote it down. Oh. Is that what you were going to say? Okay. Let's say it was. That was what you were going to say. You know the answer. Uh, yeah, they wrote it down, right? They wrote it. Where did they write it? In the Bible, right? They are the people who wrote the book. They wrote the Gospels. They knew Jesus and they saw Jesus, so they wrote the stuff down to spread it around the world and for all time so that you and me, so that we can know about Jesus and know about all the things that he did when he was alive. Cora, do something? 16. Oh. Okay, 16. Yay! She already called her. What is it? Then the, the, uh, 
the one God raised from the dead did not see decay. Right. What does that mean? He didn't, he didn't decay into the ground. Okay, what did he do instead? He immediately rose up from the dead. Well, technically descended. Okay, he rose up from the dead, and then where, what did he do? He, he went, went into heaven. heaven. He, he went into heaven, yeah. He went up into heaven. So he's still there, right? His body, Jesus and his body, just like you and me, is up in heaven right now. His body is there with him. Uh, so he's just like a real person there. Okay, 17. Kill on. The city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. Right, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. Uh, but it didn't work out very well for the disciples, right? What happened? They got caught in jail. What did you say? Got caught. No, not got caught. They went to jail. The people all got angry at them, right? And then they had to run out of town and they shook the dust off their feet. And they moved on. Yeah. They shook the dust off their feet and they moved on because the people denied them. Okay, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah. Wait, Victor, do we get the uh, thing for memory? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I gotta do that next time. Then. I mean, uh, I mean the next video. Are we okay. done at 7.30 or 7? 7.30. Okay, good. That's yeah. what I was thinking. So yeah. we can do it during so the So we got plenty of time video. then. Can I use the restroom? Uh, yeah, if you want to see. Wait, are you gonna do it during the next video? Oh, Joel. Yeah, so uh, we're gonna play. People want to play four quarters. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Watch out over here. As usual, into the Jewish synagogue. There they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Gentiles believed. But the Jews who refused to believe stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there, speaking boldly for the Lord, who confirmed the message of his grace by enabling them to do miraculous signs and wonders people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews, others with the apostles. There was a plot of foot among the Gentiles and Jews together with their leaders to mistreat them and stone them. But they found out about it and fled to the Lyconian cities of Lystra and Dur and to the surrounding country where they continued to preach the good news. In Lystra there sat a man crippled at his feet who was lame from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out, Stand up on your feet! have come down to us in human form. Part of us they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and wreaths to the city gates because he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to him. Tore the clothes and rushed out into the crowd, 
shouting. Man! Oh, why are you doing this? Go their own way. Yet he has not left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven <laughs> and crops in their seasons. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your hearts with joy. <laughs> Even with these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. Do that? Oh, the candy? Yeah, like how many? I just give them three. Okay. 
Ooh. It's going to take forever to get through that anyway. I don't think we're going to go through Wait, it. Can we pick three? And the more that, yeah, and they can just pick. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, I'll just eat it in my office. Uh, anyways. You can donate it to three. Don't, I don't think anybody needs candy donated to them. Anyways, okay. Number four, or number 18. Yes, Sydney. So the Jewish synagogue. What is a Jewish synagogue again? We just talked about it before. Does anybody remember? Smaller version of the temple. Smaller version of the temple. It's like, it's like a church, right? A church on Sunday. Wait, are we in the synagogue? Uh, no, because we're not Jewish, so we have churches. Uh, but they have the temple, and then they have little baby temples everywhere, the synagogues. Uh, but we have the church, which is much better than the synagogue and the temple. Uh, what's in the temple? What's special about the temple? It's where God is, right? God is in the temple for them. But now we have the church, so God is in the church. He's also in our hearts, right? He's in our hearts when you're baptized. He's inside of you. Okay, 19. Izzy. Enabling them to do their miraculous signs and wonders. Yeah, miraculous signs and wonders. And they did miraculous signs and wonders to do what? Why did they do those things? What? <laughs> Not to show off. <laughs> but that's maybe what some people may have thought to make everyone believe. To make everyone believe, right? That's, a, that's exactly it. God did, gave them those, those powers to do those awesome things uh, so that they would believe that God was real. Okay, uh, number 20. That one kind of snuck in there, Peter. Um, because Saul that he had faith and so he was eager. Healed, yeah. Close. What was it? Saw that he had faith to be healed. And who had faith to be healed? The man who couldn't walk. Yeah, the man who couldn't walk. Crippled. Yeah, the, the, the guy whose feet were crippled or whatever. His feet didn't form correctly while he was a baby. So he couldn't walk. Ian, you have a question? Isn't it the crippled man on the boat who yeah. the kept flashing over to? Oh, maybe. I don't know. I didn't pick that up. I'll have to look back at that. That's interesting. That would be an interesting thing. Um, okay. So next we've got number 21. Addison. The priest of Zeus. And who is Zeus? The Greek god. He's a Greek god, right? Yeah. He uses lightning Sure, yeah. He's a Greek god who uses lightning bolts. But the point is that he's not a god, right? No, he's not god. Yeah, so these are priests worshiping a false god, and they think. What do they see? The disciples doing all this crazy stuff. What do they think? They think that they're gods, right? And they so, so they start worshiping them. And they want to make sacrifices to them. So why did they stone them? They thought they were gods. Uh, well, remember some other people come in and they convince them that they're lying to them or that they're being I don't know why exactly, but basically people came in and they turned the people against the disciples. Okay, twenty-two. I missed the word in there, Izzy. We are bringing. <laughs> we are bringing. Oh. Sorry. We are bringing you good news. We are bringing you good news. That's exactly it. Okay. Uh, and what is the good news? Jesus what is good news? Is risen. Jesus is risen, and we call the gospel good news, right? Gospel is good news. Okay. Uh, I've got it. I did it. Uh, number 23. 23. 23, 23, 23. I'm in my hand. Uh, Peter. Um, he got up and went back into the city. He got up and went back into the city. Who got up? Paul. Paul, right? Or was it Paul or was it Peter? Paul. Paul. Yeah. It was Paul, right? Yeah, it was Paul. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. It was Paul. And why did he have to get back up? What happened to him? Oh, he was stoned. Yeah, they stoned him. They were throwing rocks at him. Um, and even though they were persecuting him and they hated him and they stoned him, he went. He got up after that and he went back in and started preaching to the people again. Okay, last one, 24. It was kind of quiet. It was while they were on the boat. Cooper? Oh. 
To enter the kingdom of God. To enter the kingdom of God. You got it. Good job. Lucky to enter the kingdom of God. Yep. And so what do you have to do to enter the kingdom of God? Does anybody remember what they said? Excuse me. Believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Yeah, you have to believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And it also, they said that you have to suffer, right? They said that you have to suffer because Jesus suffered. Um, so we still have 15 minutes, so we can keep playing for a little while. Can I do it? Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I've never done it before. No. I think Max should be it. Well, he can be it first next time.